Without further delay to the day's proceeding, uh, let me introduce our first speaker. Um, I'm truly delighted uh, that he's accepted our invitation to be here. We're very, very fortunate to have Jan Boelen here with us um, to help us launch uh, this third edition of the conference. Uh, Jan trained as a product designer at the Media and Design Academy in Genk. He is the artistic director at Z33 in Hasselt and the head of the MA Department of Social Design at the Design Academy in Eindhoven. He is chairman of the Committee for Architecture and Design of the Flemish community. Jan founded Z33 in 2002 as a house for contemporary art. Since then, Z33 creates projects and exhibitions which encourage the visitor to take a different look at everyday objects. It's a unique laboratory and meeting place for experiment and innovation in contemporary art and design. Through his work as a curator and educator, Jan has been developing some truly exciting discourses around contemporary design. Today, he will share some of his thoughts with us in his talk entitled, Redefining Design. Please welcome Jan Bolen. Thank you uh, for the introduction, very nice introduction. Welcome everybody. Um, yes. Uh, like said, I'm director of Z33, which means, in fact, uh, is, uh, if you're asking yourself uh, what does that mean, Z33 is just an abbreviation of an address where you can find us. Uh, so the postman will always find us uh, if you send a postcard to us. Um, oops, and this should work. Yeah. I, I would like to start with a quote, which is, all, um, uh, is a kind of uh, neighbor institute, uh, which is not far away, and then you immediately know where we are situated. It's uh, a quote from Charles Esche, uh, director of Van Abbe Museum, and we are approximately 60 kilometers away from, Brussel, uh, from Brussels and Eindhoven. We are in the middle there. Uh, and uh, he says, yeah, an institute uh, or an institute plays a role. It is there, and maybe FET is also in Barcelona, and it's in Catalonia, and it plays a role. Maybe you don't go there every week, but the fact that it's there is important for uh, a region uh, to activate, to generate power. And uh, we are situated in a quite old site, but we also have uh, buildings of 58 uh, museum spaces, some people call us uh, uh, a museum, but in fact we are not. We call ourselves, strangely enough, a house for contemporary art. Uh, and in fact, I have to say that the discussion on the disciplines itself, art or design and everything in between, is not that very interesting uh, and is not uh, very meaningful. I will try to explain and elaborate that later on uh, today. Uh, we make mainly their exhibitions uh, and uh, you could ask yourself uh, why do we still uh, make exhibitions? I really believe in the tangible object and the object that is made, produced, have uh, three dimensions or four dimensions sometimes and that you can bring that into space and then an exhibition space itself is a meaningful space to experience and to um, absorb the message itself. What we do the last years, and that's also uh, quite important to state from the beginning, is that we are not, uh, and, and you will see that, uh, and this is maybe the way my 
um, my talk, my lecture is a little bit uh, formed uh, and constructed, um, is that in the beginning we were dealing really about what is design itself and uh, I would like to come to a point where you see that uh, this is maybe this question, even if it is open or not, is maybe not that interesting. Uh, but I will come uh, I will try to make a statement about that later. So we present uh, what we call societal themes, themes that are related to everyday life. Uh, we don't want to show ethical consequences, uh, nor we are uh, merely interested in solutions that are developed by artists, designers, architects itself. But we try to, to bring into space, and that can be also public space, um, uh, a kind of poetical and open visual language. And if you do that, uh, we don't do that just by text or by... Um, uh, by giving information to people, we try uh, to use the power of, a, of an object uh, and uh, try to create an, a, a question, to create uh, doubt, to provoke uh, doubt even, and use um, doubt as a strategy, a strategy for uh, questioning our everyday life and what is going on in life itself. This is a role that institutes today can play, and I think they should play, play, especially cultural institutes or institutes that are on the border of culture, economy, um, education, research, and, uh, and so on. They can act as a self-reflective uh, self laboratory. So, but nevertheless, uh, I was here and I was asked to, to, to talk and discuss a little bit with you together how design itself is evolving, how it's, it's redefining itself nowadays and what is going on in the design world today. And uh, I make a little trip back uh, in the, uh, like let's say, short history. Um, I uh, run through the program of the whole um, uh, conference and I picked out the elements uh, which are maybe meaningful for uh, introducing or maybe also questioning other uh, speakers uh, the coming days. Uh, so there maybe we create a common ground uh, already to kick off, to start and uh, strangely enough, I don't think it's strangely enough, a lot of people uh, that are appearing the coming two days are also appearing in a program uh, of, in the program of Z33 or the things we do abroad. So, uh, the first thing I would like to, to state is uh, in 2007 we made an exhibition uh, with the title the, uh, Designing Critical Design. And in fact, it was uh, uh, it started off, or it, the the the, uh, the term terminology came uh, by a text by Dunn and Raby. Uh, it was approximately ten years ago that it was published, and it shows clearly what kind of distinction uh, or which kind of new way they were looking to design. Design is not only problem solving, it could also become problem finding. Um, it could become uh, uh, just more as um, affirmative, it could be critical, it could be instead of talking continuously about the user, we could start talking about the person and uh, it is not about which app uh, or application, maybe it's more about the implication and it's not that we are doing research for design but we do research through design. So these kind of things were popping out uh, in uh, let's say the middle of uh, the tense of uh, the last decade 
and it was a, a, an attitude I saw with more designers, uh, Dun and Raby, of course, and they got their first solo exhibition, uh, which was part of a kind of trilogy in Z33, and there they produced and commissioned or recommissioned uh, technological dreams series number one, Robots, uh, which is now in the collection of MoMA. And what you see is uh, a kind of family of robots, uh, and they are very needy. You have to step into them, and then they become quiet, or uh, they start talking to you. Uh, they need attention, continuously attention. Uh, this is one project. Another project is uh, a project of uh, Studio Mucking Bay, which is consists of uh, Jürgen Bay and uh, Rihanna Mucking. Rihanna and Jürgen developed a dustbin bag uh, furniture, and it came out of a research uh, that they had to do for uh, a manufacturer of furniture. Uh, a furniture manufacturer that was asking to do something with um, um, uh, with uh, the waste of the company. And they saw there was a kind of lot of waste uh, that was uh, the of the cutting, the, the very fine, let's say, flower of the cutting of the wood. And they wanted to suck that and make furniture out of that. And then they thought further, what would happen if you have uh, your own vacuum cleaner at home and you clean your house and uh, um, by the time you are creating your own furniture by your own dust. Uh, so these kind of objects uh, are um, developed, um, were developed for that exhibition and are also showing a certain attitude how that we deal with ev everyday life, questioning situations and using that um, context and using humor as a way to deal and to communicate projects. Another one uh, was uh, Car Mirror, uh, somebody here from Barcelona. When I met him, I said, I'm happy finally to do something with a Spanish designer. He was not that happy because he said immediately, I'm not a Spanish designer, I'm a Catalonian designer. Uh, it's uh, Marty Guiche. And Marty developed uh, a series of mirrors that were placed in the city and in the exhibition space itself. It's a car mirror and uh, it is a... Um, it's not, uh, it was referring to the car itself, not the car as a tool, but the car as a, uh, an extended uh, um, uh, way or dress of your personality. You are in fact um, uh, buying a car that is fitting your personality. So you could drive around the city and then see yourself sitting uh, in the car and uh, looking if it was fitting you or not. After that, uh, we were a kind of uh, developing a project, uh, and at that time in Europe, uh, several projects were dealing with uh, telling stories, uh, narratives, uh, super stories. One was one that we made in Z33 at VNA Victoria and Albert Museum. You had around that time, 2008, 2009, telling tales. Uh, and I thought, yeah, this can be interesting, but maybe uh, I see products more and more as processes. They are not just fixed anymore, they are developing and they become a performance. Uh, and design object becomes a performance, it becomes almost an act. Uh, it's not uh, autonomous anymore, it is uh, part of a network, uh, it's uh, related to the audience uh, and audience reactions. Um, it's not a finished object, uh, it, there is continuously, when you see today an object, uh, um, and that go can go from our smartphone to another object, process and change is 
continuously um, is part of it. It's never finished. And um, the designer or the artist who developed it uh, or the company who is selling it is not longer only in charge of it. Um, they try, but uh, they will have to give up, I think. Um, so that exhibition was consisting out of kind of uh, you could say four chapters, uh, perf uh, design performance, uh, the performing objects, performing machines and performing space, uh, because this is kind of overview uh, how we can see design by performance. And this is not something which uh, what is already or which is uh, only happening now. This is uh, Bruno Munari, um, and uh, it's a reenactment of a performance he did in the 50s, seeking comfort in an uncomfortable uh, chair. Um, he did that uh, already in the 50s, uh, and he was dealing a lot with performance and performativity of objects. Uh, there is a long history of design and uh, performance anyway. Um, this is uh, Studio Glitero uh, in the front, and uh, it was molded and made on the spot itself. Process, product, uh, place, uh, everything uh, came together at one spot. Uh, you, on the other side, I will see it later, you can see even the mold uh, that was standing there and I kind of left over. It became a bench. Uh, in the exhibition where people could rest and stay over and uh, in, the, in the far end you see Martin Bass uh, a 24 hour clock, uh, a clock which is uh, um, a, a kind of 24 or 12 hour um, uh, time indication which is a movie, a video uh, that is um, uh, and where the, the the arrows of the clock itself are filled with people that slowly move on a beach and it's a top view, um, uh, top view projection itself. The molds. And then I had a problem. Um, I wanted to make uh, a project with, uh, at that time, 2010, uh, 3D printing, uh, I thought this is very interesting. Uh, even I had to explain at that moment to a lot of people what 3D printing was. Uh, and I went to one of, um, also at this moment, uh, one of the largest companies uh, in Belgium. Uh, and one is one of the expert companies, uh, uh, it's Materialize. I went to them and I said, yeah, I would like to uh, to make a project uh, together with designers because I'm interested in the process. And I like the process of uh, the printing itself where you see the evo evolution uh, of how that the object is growing, almost like uh, a plant or a tree, how it is growing and how this uh, process or movie almost uh, could uh, show uh, people how that uh, objects become performances and acts. Um, so at that moment on, uh, they were very enthusiastic because they wanted to communicate their um, technology to a wider audience. Um, then I said, yeah, there is only one thing for me, performance and performativity uh, needs uh, um, um, randomness and imperfection. If it is really part of everyday life, uh, we should uh, uh, we should include it, uh, and we should include randomness uh, in it. It's like a performance of John Cage. The moment you um, somebody in the public is coughing, the concert stops or go on. Uh, uh, so there is an interaction with the public itself uh, or the participant in it. And they didn't like uh, my proposal at all. The engineers wanted something uh, perfect. Um, they didn't want to have something that was imperfect at all uh, and showing randomness because they controlled the process, they said, completely. So um, we went off and I met uh, at that time Dries Verbrugge and Claire uh, Warnier. 
um, uh, they form the collective uh, Unfold, a very interesting uh, collective, designers collective. They graduated also at the Design Academy in Eindhoven, and they had one of the first, uh, let's say, uh, 3D printers. Um, it was at their in their home. It was on top of their laundry machine. Uh, and uh, I was um, uh, communicating with them, could we do something with it? Because I, I was just uh, refused uh, by that company. And they said, yeah, we, um, but we have a lot of problems. Uh, each time we are uh, working here, the, due to the fact that uh, it's on top of, we live very small, um, due to the fact that it's on our uh, laundry machine, the 3D printer is not working. Uh, it's not active. Uh, so um, we don't know how to handle it. And then suddenly, one week later, I got a message from them and they said, yeah, we found it. We, we are not going to go on with, um, with plastic. We are not going to uh, melt plastic, uh, but we are going to use a material that is really uh, in favor of humidity, and that's clay. So let's print clay. Uh, and that's what they did. Uh, and what... Uh, what we are doing, in fact, uh, with them uh, in front and then around the corner, really around the corner, they found the guy who is dismantling continuously uh, copiers and other machines, and he integrated uh, the, the potter wheel. So in front here, you see a potter wheel, and uh, um, with a scanner uh, of an old photocopier, and there you can uh, mold the cylinder, the wire model, uh, and you can turn the wheel and you can make your own 3D model. You push the button, one of the red buttons in front, and you send the file uh, to the 3D printer. And uh, it starts to print uh, in clay. It's not perfect, it was not perfect in the beginning, but it at least it was using the, the, the humidity and the randomness uh, of uh, weather and all kind of uh, circumstances that were around. The project evolved uh, and became a very interesting project, also very networked uh, around the world, and it's called L'Artisan Electronique. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I find this one of the groundbreaking projects uh, itself. Um, another um, project that is, uh, um, by the way, all these um, uh, projects, you can see little movies uh, uh, on the website of Z33. Everything is documented there. Um, you can see how they are running interviews with the artists and the designers uh, itself. This is an art architect, uh, one machine, living machine, and it's a kind of 24-hour house in, a con uh, in 40 minutes. And you have to, to see that also as a movie uh, because it's continuously alive. Um, the curtains go open and close, uh, the, the, the machine takes over the control, um, the lights go on and off, uh, the, co the coffee starts uh, to work, um, um, the ventilation starts, the shower goes on and off. So it's like somebody is there, but it's not, uh, there is nobody. Um, and afterwards, uh, and still on, there are performances done in and around that house. And then, um, a couple of years uh, after, or no, almost immediately after, uh, Design by Performance, we developed Alter Nature. And that is about how that nature itself is uh, changing, uh, changing through technology. Um, oops, and it's, yep, okay. Uh, changing through technology and um, also um, um, uh, for instance, biobricks, uh, if we are talking about open design and about sharing, what is going on now is that you can download uh, um, uh, formulas, uh, you can construct life, you can construct life and uh, 
uh, by doing that, uh, you can send these um, uh, bacteria that you create, you can send them to a laboratory, and 24 hours, uh, this laboratory is sending you back these new forms of life. Um, this is possible, and this is happening uh, at this moment. So the implications of open design uh, are uh, going uh, further than, um, than we can imagine. And if there are people that can imagine something then uh, and what is going on and could go on and can develop scenarios for that, I believe then that are designers. And that is also happening right away now, is that uh, in, uh, in earlier on, you had to understand science in order to design. You had to know the physical laws. And now you need uh, design itself uh, and designing in order to understand science. Um, so the speculative uh, form uh, is in fact um, uh, uh, making uh, scenarios visible. Um, this was an exhibition we presented and where we were uh, pointing several moments uh, into uh, the history of the development of nature um, and, how, and showing how that nature continuously, in fact, is uh, uh, cultivated, uh, manipulated uh, and developed by all kind of um, cultural um, acts that we do every day. This is one very nice example, uh, and you think, yeah, of course, these are carrots. Uh, everybody recognizes them. They are very strange. Uh, they are from Driesens and Verstappen. Uh, we don't think these are normal carrots uh, anymore. And um, in fact, we, uh, some of us probably know also bio carrots or organic carrots, and then uh, they we know that they are purple or white, that are different cor colors. In, um, there was a king of the Netherlands, Willem of Orange, and he announced uh, the fact uh, that only the orange carrots could be sold. So uh, by that, uh, only orange carrots uh, are on the market. Uh, that's why we only know orange carrots. Um, and by uh, kind of selection and also standardization uh, of the supermarkets and the shops, uh, we only know straight uh, carrots. Uh, so uh, by centuries already, we are as um, civilization, if you can call it like that, we are diminishing uh, a kind of diversity. Uh, we are selecting, we are manipulating continuously nature itself. Another project that was presented, and it's a kind of random choice, but just to, to open up uh, a little bit uh, a kind of uh, um, ideas um, that we maybe later on, uh, I hope uh, we have time to to question and also question me, uh, we presented a, a acoustic botanical garden, uh, acoustic botany uh, from David Benke. It was is a kind of garden which is completely designed uh, and where all the plants uh, that are there, the trees, the bushes, the flowers, they are designed uh, in order to make a certain sound. Uh, they are there uh, and they are play with the wind, the sun, uh, if it is morning, uh, and so on. So it's to give an extra um, uh, poetical uh, experience when you walk through that botanical garden. In the morning, uh, every season, uh, it would completely change. And you can dis uh, discover that in the, in the model itself. Another project is from Alison Kutla, and uh, these projects are mainly done with together with the university. And here you see um, uh, bacteria that are um, uh, uh, tiles uh, or referring to tiles, and they are growing and changing. This is a project of Tuur van Balen. 
en Rivital Cohen, Cohen van Bale, they call themselves now, and it's uh, named after a typical Belgian sport uh, and uh, uh, playing with pigeons. Uh, Pigeon d'or is the golden pigeon. Uh, it's the, the, the pigeon you want to embrace. Uh, it's the, the prize winner uh, because you do competitions with them. And what you see is, uh, in fact, uh, a part of the installation. You cannot understand it like this, I have to tell you. It is they are really working together with scientists and thinking how that the bacteria uh, in the belly and the, uh, of the pigeon can change in order that, inf uh, that they are not uh, producing uh, poop uh, and that they are uh, producing soap to clean the city. So what would happen if the pigeons start to clean the city? This is, uh, you think this is crazy, but it's in fact possible to change bacteria and uh, um, so if we know that, uh, what kind of scenarios can we develop then? Uh, how can we as designers think about possibilities um, uh, uh, and in order to help and to understand science itself and the effects and the implications of design? And then that means that we, don't, uh, we won't build uh, pins everywhere on all the buildings, but that we want to have the, the pigeons around us, that we put something on our car because they will follow us and they become our pigeon d'or, they become our uh, big friends uh, that clean everything around us. So, Design is trying to explore new relational elements and that goes from very, and that will be, uh, that doesn't mean what I say now that uh, solutions are excluded. I'm just showing kind of uh, what I think are uh, more uh, uh, groundbreaking projects or that are trying to push and redefine continuously by its uh, nature, the definition of design itself, uh, that is performative, pragmatic, process oriented open-ended, uh, maybe more open-ended than open, experiential and participatory. And what I see happening is that designers are trying to connect uh, software and uh, hardware in new ways, and that doesn't mean literally. It is more the thinking uh, behind uh, how that uh, in the software world is taught, that that is connected uh, with uh, hardware itself. Uh, and then uh, if that is coming into um, uh, the way we design things, it's more about uh, dealing with an attitude uh, rather than just uh, putting um, uh, or connecting an object to the internet and creating the internet of things. Uh, it should be more about how can we uh, connect this attitude uh, with object itself. And uh, maybe this is a kind of first uh, question, and maybe we can go on with that later on, is um, uh, this Internet of Things. At this time, I find this is kind of uh, um, Internet uh, 1.0. How can we create an Internet of Things 2.0, uh, where we all participate in, and where we have maybe more um, uh, effect on what is going on? And that's not only the manufacturer. So one of the persons uh, I met also around uh, 2007 is, um, um, is Thomas Lomé. Um, and Thomas Lomé is uh, tomorrow here. Uh, he's presenting open structures, or I think he is. Uh, uh, I will give a very short introduction, but it shows a kind of mentality which I would like and an attitude. I would like that you question not only now, but also maybe during the lectures itself and discuss it with him. Um, it is the new place and position of the designer itself. Uh, the designer who is not only uh, at the top anymore and uh, the person who is saying what the rest is uh, should do, um, but he is um, uh, also not in the middle. 
uh, he's somewhere around uh, and he's on an equal level uh, and the object uh, we are talking about uh, or the tangible project is in the middle. And if a project uh, is in the middle and a company, uh, a customer, a person, an architect uh, um, are around, what is then in the middle? Then we need to make, to make certain agreements. And what he did is he found a certain, uh, let's say, uh, grid, uh, an open modular grid. He worked for that, uh, he did quite a lot of research to come to a grid of four by four centimeters. And that grid is uh, connecting everybody and everything also. So it's everybody and everything. You can see that on the, the website openstructures.net. And uh, we started uh, a couple of years by commissioning him to make parts uh, that were built out of that grid. We invited other people also to make uh, that um, uh, this project and we started to build things and a bike uh, could become uh, a kitchen and uh, a kitchen could become maybe a building. Uh, so it's evolving because you it's kind of open mecano, open Lego system that be can be uh, connecting. And each time we are presenting it, as Thomas, as me, uh, a lot of people uh, say this is very totalitarian. Oh my God! <laughs> um, and uh, but it's a nice way to think how we can connect everybody. After this, um, I'm gonna drink a little bit. Also, due to the reactions we had on uh, uh, design by performance. I saw that uh, in 2012, uh, and at that time, uh, really, uh, exactly at that time, The Economist uh, was publishing um, uh, 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 something like a new industrial revolution is there. We made the exhibition The Machine. And the machine itself is um, uh, referring to how the designers are appropriating materials, tools, and um, uh, systems. Uh, here, what you see here is a project of Thomas uh, Fayi, uh, the metabolic uh, factory. It is a project where you can say we all have material. Uh, you just cut it, uh, you go to the pharmacy, you see what you have to add. Uh, I don't know exactly anymore what it is, but you just can get it. It's very cheap from the pharmacy. And you make your own cup, uh, plastic cup. It's a bioplastic, and you start to drink. Uh, so these kind of um, uh, provocative uh, projects, of course, uh, uh, also open perspectives where our body maybe become a kind of factory and a, a, a source of material. Uh, we are producing electricity, we are uh, producing keratine, uh, we are producing a lot of uh, materials that can be used and reused and recycled uh, uh, by itself. Uh, so maybe we can uh, create a space in our home uh, self to, to pr produce stuff. Um, we become the source, the producer, the distributor, uh, and the user itself. This means that if we start thinking about this, the, r the models and the shifts, the traditional models itself are changing. The powers are changing. So the, the guy who has the, the sources, the materials, is, uh, are maybe we. And uh, so we uh, decide. Uh, we decide when we produce, how that we produce, how uh, that we make it, and so on. So these consequences have really a kind of political uh, meaning uh, in itself. Again, uh, unfold an extra step on uh, their uh, project. What I want to show also is that all along the way, uh, we try to develop with designers a kind of trajectory in thinking and developing their projects. So it's not just to become an illustration in, uh, in, in a um, 
in an exhibition, but we really would like to we or we produce, uh, we produce, we contextualize, uh, we promote uh, in order to uh, to push the projects further than uh, they are in uh, in the beginning. Another project is uh, also by. Thomas uh, Fahy and the names dropped. Uh, Thomas Fahy and uh, um, Itai Ohai. Uh, it's an Israeli designer and uh, a French. Um, what, I what you see here is an installation. In fact, it's uh, an assembly line. There are two assembly lines. And uh, I will try to point you here. Uh, so it's starting here uh, with some balloons and latex. Uh, and here some new bioplastics uh, that are developed by uh, DSM. Um, you pump uh, the balloons, uh, you pump them, you uh, put them into be between these uh, rings, uh, and uh, then you, as you wish, you can form them in the shapes you want, uh, and afterwards, uh, uh, you see there a fixed shape, N th that one is not, uh, uh, this one will be rotated, molded, and that one not. There you just push the, the plastic in it uh, by uh, air pressure, by the pump, and you are creating very complex um, uh, molds and forms and shapes that you normally only could do with uh, uh, high uh, technological um, yeah, machines or uh, production systems. Uh, uh, so the investment is really low, uh, and the quality of these projects uh, products are really high. Uh, so this is what going on, uh, or what is uh, possible to do, um, uh, and how the designers can appropriate systems, uh, tools, and materials. So, uh, kind of a, a small step to education, because it's all. Uh, sometimes people ask my uh, ask me. What are you doing everywhere and everything? But for me, it's just like one big project uh, I'm involved in. Uh, it's not uh, separate things. Uh, it's not just making exhibitions or commissioning work or uh, educating and researching. It is also uh, it's just uh, one big project. And another project is that of Eugenia Morpurgu. She's an Italian designer, uh, and she started from the fact that uh, probably 80%, uh, and then uh, it's an underestimation of the people here, have plastic soles, uh, and we cannot repair them anymore. Uh, we throw our shoes away. What would happen if we start rethinking the shoe itself and that the sole uh, can be replaced uh, and can just be uh, printed, uh, can be uh, manufactured uh, maybe at the shoemaker's place itself? Or and, that and from that moment on, uh, you create a kind of platform that can be used by several designers, um, and that's uh, the, the project now. Now it has a, uh, a different uh, name, and it's a don't, don't Run. If you go to a website, Don't Run, and you type in, or you Google Eugenia Morpurgu and uh, Don't Run, you see her project. Uh, that she is developing. She is also uploading all the little instructables, how that people are doing it, how they are making shoes. She is doing tests in uh, London and Belgium, uh, everywhere. She is trying to develop. She is now, I think, in Mallorca, uh, near to that one company, uh, of course, you know here all, um, uh, to develop her project further. Tristan Kopp. Um, what would happen if we uh, share the uh, oops uh, the main parts of the bike and you construct uh, the bike yourself uh, for the rest? You use just the materials you have and that could be. Uh, wood, that could be metal, that could be an aluminium tube, just what you find around the corner. Uh, you can take it on a journey in, a, in another way than you do it now. I want to show also this project um, of Gio Akamo Piovan, because it's 
uh, it's harvesting pollution. In the Netherlands and Belgium, you have a lot of brown fields. Uh, that means polluted areas. Um, and plants can uh, clean the soil. Uh, if we plant there uh, certain plants, they can extract the heavy metals out of the soil and oil. And by that, you clean the soil. Um, that's phytoremediation. It's quite known uh, knowledge. Um, what would happen if you involve the community in that? What would happen uh, if you harvest then the plants? Because that is what you have to do. And you wait with the harvest, uh, and then you see he's uh, having a, a brick. Yeah, it's working. Oops. Um, uh, a brick, uh, and then after 20 years, uh, we all know that the heavy materials and metals like zinc and cadmium and lead will be very expensive and scarce, uh, that you can extract them again, that then the technology will be ready for that. So what I want to say, in fact, it's uh, for me, it's not uh, like in the beginning we were uh, announcing. It's, uh, and I'm not the first one who is saying this. Bruce Moe also said that. It's not about the world of design. It's, in fact, about designing the world, life, and society. It is, uh, and I don't think technology itself is uh, the answer. Um, and I saw here Ethel Barona, and I freely quote her, um, because uh, she uh, mentioned that in a lecture that I visited before. We have to qu question ourselves, what was the question again? Uh, what were, why are we doing it? Uh, and I think this is kind of uh, uh, the technology trap that we have to avoid uh, in this open, shared uh, creativity. Why are we doing it? Uh, so we, try to we have to answer the 21st century problems uh, and issues with the um, 20th century answers. I want to say a lot more, but my time is over. Huh? Um, Five minutes, yeah, okay. Um, I would like to, to show projects that are on now, uh, and more and more, they are, like I said, uh, they are not dealing anymore with uh, um, design itself. Um, design as such is not interesting. Uh, it's more what is going on in society that is very interesting. Um, and, uh, uh, this came from a question, um, uh, design is an interesting tool, it's a meaningful tool, uh, but it should not be the goal. Uh, and this is a cabinet which is presented in Vienna now, uh, which is on show, um, and is questioning uh, how that in this open design world and shared creativity, how that we are dealing with authorship, ownership and property. Uh, it's a kind of cabinet, it's presented in a museum, it's the first museum, this cabinet, it's the private museum, and how do we share that, uh, this knowledge nowadays? Um, is the knowledge still ours? Is what I have in my Gmail my property, or is it Google's property? Uh, how are we dealing with these um, uh, facts? Uh, and this cabinet came out of the idea that uh, uh, we can collect also as designers our prototypes and everything what we have. But in fact, around that, you have a kind of cloud uh, of information. So, uh, somebody made a little movie of your object. Um, you have yourself digital files. Uh, you have uh, photos of it. And uh, how do you collect that? Uh, digital information around your analog object. Uh, how are these connected? And how do we go on with this um, uh, um, way of developing things? And how then authorship, ownership, and property is evolving? We put uh, some very strange uh, projects in uh, in. Uh, um, uh, in that cabinet. I show you just uh, two of them. You recognize Thomas, but in the middle you will see an uh, open desk uh, of Alastair Parvin, who will be tomorrow here. Uh, also, he has, I think, an interesting uh, um, idea about how that uh, um, property ownership and authorship, in fact, is playing a very important role in his uh, project. And then 
in the corner uh, on top, uh, you see uh, Michel Traxler um, Collective Works, uh, and they also just, I, I asked them to just to put um, leftovers uh, of their project in uh, the cabinet, uh, not the object itself, uh, the leftovers, uh, because it's showing the process, and what is it? As a visitor, you become participant of making a vase, uh, and um, little markers are dotting on the the vase, the uh, the which is molded around on that turning wheel. And uh, so we can ask ourselves: Is it not um, more important to to keep or store uh, also here as a kind of museum uh, in, in progress, uh, instead of trying to keep all these objects, to just uh, try to uh, keep the processes and to uh, track the processes itself. And what is going on now in the Netherlands, so this was Vienna, uh, now uh, on Friday evening uh, another exhibition opened uh, designing scarcity. Uh, we live in times of scarcity, uh, or that's what we say, and scarcity I think is just uh, a construct. Uh, every 40 years uh, we recycle, uh, we uh, uh, we reinvent um, uh, a crisis, and that goes from the 30s, the 70s, and uh, nowadays. Uh, this is kind of cleaning system of society itself, um, and this is called the cycle of Kondatrev. Um, designers throughout history develop strategies, design strategies, to deal with, um, with this... Um, uh, um, uh, times uh, with scarcity itself and dividing and share and inform and cooperate which are on the bottom are in fact also part of this conference. I mean this is really typical for these kind of times that we are uh, trying to share the information that we try to inform uh, and that we divide and share. And uh, there you see Lisa Ma. Uh, um, she will be around uh, um, tomorrow, I think, or today. I don't, I'm not uh, knowing that by heart. You see the world bottles of Heineke, of uh, John Habraken, uh, which are in the collection of the new institute, which is the former Dutch Architecture Institute. Um, you see how that woman tried to uh, imitate uh, um, uh, stockings uh, after nylon, after silk we got nylon, nylon became very scarce and then they used uh, coffee and other uh, leftovers to uh, imitate uh, stockings. It's a project of Thomas and this is a very uh, nice project. You can Google uh, um, uh, oh, damn. Fiona de Mesnilno, uh, a French designer also at the Design Academy of Eindhoven. Um, yeah, I'm going to close slowly. See Wikihouse, Thomas Lomé, another project. I picked just the projects I thought that were here. It's about uh, uh, architecture and how his project is uh, saying, in fact, that uh, every building is a uh, prediction and every prediction is wrong. Uh, so if we can adapt, uh, we still have possibilities, we create possibilities. Uh, and this is kind of how this his open structure system became also architecture itself. And then I want to refer to Bio, uh, the biennial, which is the oldest design biennial uh, in the world. It's, uh, it will go on the 18th of September. It exists 50 years. And I said once I never wanted to do a design biennial because there are enough uh, design biennials and the, you see everywhere the same stuff. But nevertheless, they seduced me. And I think I found an interesting way to tackle um, the... Um, designed by the itself. 
you will see 12 groups that are presenting uh, work uh, in uh, uh, and that's uh, uh, um, that came to Slovenia that are international groups and that are working on projects and using uh, Slovenia as a laboratory for design itself uh, and these are more or less the teams they are working around uh, you can find that on bio 50se or bio.se uh, which is standing for Slovenia um, so the only thing, in fact, what I would like to do is um, trying uh, the frictions that there are uh, and that are very interesting in contemporary society through design and through designing, making new connections uh, with everyday life. And I would like to thank you all for your attention. Thank you.